guys, welcome back to Magic TV. It's nine o'clock, it's a Friday, and you know what? I, uh, I uh, My plane lands at 8.30 on Friday, uh, which means that as you are watching this, I'm probably going through customs, which is why I had to film this video in LA before I come home. So hopefully this will be the last of the videos that I filmed in LA, uh, unless there's a couple that Michael hasn't put up that I don't know about. But today I'm going to be back with another one of my love hate lists. Now, if you don't know what the love hate list is, the idea is very simple. It's what's happened in the community in the last couple of weeks that has caused me to both love and hate something specifically. Um, very important. I love the love hate list. I really do. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, uh, and, and I'm trying to be more positive on this channel. And for everybody that watched the video last Friday and, and heard me talk about how much I hate social media, um, you know, it can, or the, the, the online bullying in social media, I, I really kind of hate it. And for everybody that left a comment in the comments saying, hey, we appreciate you, and there were tons of them, it made my day. I've tried to reply to as many people as possible, but honestly, it made my day. And I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. And I do try to be more positive on this channel. And today, I used to do rants all the time. I don't do them anymore. But this is my love-hate list. Four things that I love that's happened in the magic community in the last couple of weeks. And four things that I have hated. And I'm not going to talk about online bullying because I did an entire video on that last week. If you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. It was called The Magic Community Can Be Disgusting Sometimes or something like that. It's in the playlist. But today, four things that I love and four things that I hate within the magic community. I hope you're ready. Buckle up. Let's break him down. Okay, number one, the first thing that I love that's happened in the last couple of weeks is Ryland's performance on AGT. Um, and look, I'm going to do a video on AGT at some point when I get home. And I know I mentioned this briefly on the Q&A, but as a father, how can I not be proud of my 10-year-old son walking on stage on AGT and doing what he did. Now, you may love the trick, you may not love the trick. I love the trick. Obviously, me and Ryland put it together my, uh, ourselves uh, with help from many wonderful people like Phil Smith and uh, and Guy Barrett, but I love, the, I love the act. But the thing that really impressed me the most wasn't the, the uh, Lego turning into the helicopter. It wasn't the final reveal. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't how the act was actually staged with all the balls bouncing. It wasn't any of that. The thing that I loved the most was that 10 year old walking on stage and delivering what he delivered with the, 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 the stage presence that he had. And he worked so hard on that over the last year. If you go back and you look at Ryland's audition and semi-final performance on Britain's Got Talent, you'll probably notice he mumbled a lot. Um, it was really the first time he'd performed on a stage that size, really. And 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 uh, he was clear, you could understand what he was saying, but he wasn't super crystal clear. And over the last year and a half, whatever it's been, he's been working on his delivery and he's been working on enunciation and he's been working on uh, a stage uh, stagecraft. And really that's the thing that we've been working on with him more than anything else, more than, hey, Ryland, now you need to learn how to do a pass. Now you need to learn how to do this vanish. Now you need to learn how to do this vanish. Far and beyond any of that, we've been working on stagecraft and how to stand on stage and how to present on stage. And watching him stand up and think about this for a minute. I think there was like four and a half, five thousand people in that audience. There's cameras everywhere. And and we'll do a video on this, but 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 there were lots of problems that happened on the run-up to him performing. So we were here for a week beforehand, first of all. Um, our flights got delayed. We ended up spending 32 hours getting into LA. Our bags got lost with all of his props in them. They didn't turn up until two or three days later. We didn't think we're, no, more than that, probably four or five days later, like just before the performance. We, um, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have bags. We were coming up with contingency plans in case we weren't going to get props. Guy Barrett was building replacements for us, which we brought over. My wife had to come over in order to bring extra props. Then one of the props broke. Um, and, and, and couldn't be fixed and we had to come up with that solution then the final reveal didn't work as well as we wanted it to and we had to come up with something else and then through various different reasons the script that Ryland delivered was changed several times so the, the script that you saw him perform on that AGT had probably been changed maybe even the day before 
and it was a completely different script or, or very, very different. Um, and then you've got to think of, there's a million things that you have to remember because when you're dealing with live TV, you're dealing with, okay, don't forget this camera's going to be here. So you're going to walk from this direction. Now, when you're doing this, even though the person you're performing for is here, you've got to angle them towards that camera over there. Million things that you need to think of far and beyond the fact that you're performing on live television, being judged in front of 5,000 people. And for him to be able to present that act as well as he did, and the confidence and the inflection in his tone, um, I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. And it was a bloody good trick as well. So, you know, I might be biased. I am biased. He's my son. And as you saw, if you watched AGT, I stood up there and said, I love you, Ryland, because I was genuinely... Having worked on that for like two months and literally rehearsing it over and over again to see him deliver it as well as he did, I've never been more proud, I've never been happier than I was in that moment. So if this is a love-hate list, there is nothing higher that I can put on this list right now than number one, the thing I love more than anything else is Ryland. So we're going from Ryland to Rick Lax. This is the first of the hate list. Now, look, I know the last time I talked about Rick Lax, it was when he, he, it was on the Magic Podcast, and I talked with Lloyd Barnes about how Rick Lax had just exposed to the Magic community, had just literally exposed um, Mr. Danger by, by tenure, which is a fantastic trick. Um, he just exposed it. He just shown everyone how it worked literally just showed everyone how it worked. And I said, I don't understand why he would do this. This doesn't make any sense. This is an absolutely stupid thing to do. In a 30 second video, he's exposed this trick completely. It's not fair on Tenyo. It's not fair on people that have bought it. It's not fair on anybody. And and sometimes some people came up to me and he said, well, you know, sometimes people said, hey, well, it was a Tenyo trick. You know, no professional does Tenyo tricks, even though I do. Um, I, and, and off the back of that, Rick got very unhappy and left me, I think, 25 voice notes on my messenger talking about how I wasn't fair on him because I insulted him because I said he was a, uh, I think I called him a fucking idiot. Um, and 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 he, he was a stupid twat, I think it was the exact words I used. I might be different, but I think it was around about that. And he took exception for that. Uh, but here's the thing I need to I need people to understand. What they need to understand is you can be a decent person and do a stupid twatish thing. And it seems that Rick constantly does stupid twatish things. That's what he seems to do. Now, I'm a huge fan of Rick Racks. Don't get me wrong. I think Tornado is one of the best tricks that's ever been produced by Penguin Magic. I think that what he does and has done, especially back in the day on uh, social media, is exceptional. No one can take that away from him. I think that some of the tricks that he's released and the job that he did on Penguin, pr uh, you know, promoting other people's tricks, I think that there's a lot that he's done that he should be proud of. But recently, he's took to exposing a whole bunch of stuff needlessly for no reason. And I know that when I say what I'm about to say, I'm probably getting another 25 voice notes. And if somebody, if Rick listens to this video or somebody listens to this video and then shows it to Rick, I just want you to understand, Rick, I don't give a fuck. You can say whatever you want to. I'm going to delete your voice notes without listening to you because you babble incoherent shit. I may like you. I may respect you. But what you do on social media with exposing magic to people that have not searched for it is wrong. I've done that. And you're talking to somebody here that has no problem with YouTube exposure. I've done videos on this. There will be more videos coming in the future. I think videos, long form videos on YouTube is a good thing. But Rick... You're a dick. Let me explain why. Recently, I saw you take the buttons the uh, that, that got marketed by Mark uh, uh, by Matthew Wright, the uh, the copper silver brass with buttons. I actually put one of my routines on the project on on the tutorial. I put one of my routines, and you just exposed it. You just exposed it. You just took the po you just took the uh, uh, the button and you took the um, the washer and you put them together and you turned it around and you showed it was a poker chip. 
and you just expose the whole thing. And I know that there's some people that go, oh, it wasn't exposure, it wasn't exposure. It was just showing that it's a weird thing that when you turn around, it becomes a poker chip. No, it's exposure. If you go see that video, and by the way, people will see that video because it's not like a thing that they need to search for. It's short form content, it's real. They will see this. If they see that, and then they go and watch me the next day and I do that trick and I bring out those same three props, they are going to know exactly at that point how that works. And there was no reason to do it. There was absolutely, are you running out of fucking ideas? Because there was no reason to do that. You, there was no reason at all for you to take this prop, especially as it was invented by a gentleman who's an incredible creator who's now passed away. And this was his last creation. This was, he's like Mark Southworth, this was his last creation, <coughs> excuse me, and, and the last thing that he put out to the magic community. And you decide to take it and just expose it. And it was a better, first of all, it's not good for the legacy of Mark Southworth. It's not good for Matthew Wright, who bought this to market. It's not good for Murphys, who wholesale it. It's not good for anybody who performs it, like me and Ryland. It's not good for anybody who's bought it, who wants to perform it. And, and the thing is, there's a million other videos you could have done. There's a million other videos that don't require exposing a prop to the general public on a reel. It's a shitty thing, Rick. As much as I respect you, and as much as I respect what you've achieved in this industry, and as much as you, uh, I respect the tricks that you've done and the social media th that you've achieved and everything like that, you are a dumb fucking idiot for taking this trick and exposing it to people for absolutely no reason at all. You stupid, dumb idiot. Okay, second thing that I want to talk about loving is the magic community, the magic community in general. Um, because I did a video last week, I mentioned it at the uh, the beginning of this video, I did a video on the magic community and why the magic community can sometimes be disgusting. And they can. Uh, I'm not going to go through it anymore. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But the magic community, oh my God, sometimes they can suck. Very small percentage. However, I've had so many people send me personal emails. So many people fill contact forms in on my various websites. So many people have put comments on the YouTube video that I put up saying how much they appreciate me, how much I get. And that really meant a lot because that the, 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 the guy especially that posted on the Magic Cafe, it really did affect me more than you can possibly imagine. Um, to the point that while I was filming this, I was filming it on my phone. I am now. So I was looking at my face and I was like looking at it. I was like, I don't think I can do this. I can't look at myself and film this video. That's how it made me feel. And normally I don't have a problem producing content, but I had to do like about 20 or 30 takes of that. And I felt really crappy and um, really bad. And it's just human nature that you would, right? When somebody attacks you personally like that and body shames you, it's going to make you feel bad, right? It made me feel bad. Um, but honestly, the magic community, and, and, and I must have had over 200, 250 messages, um, really long ones saying how much they appreciate everything I've done. And I can't tell you how big that was. I can't tell you how amazing that was to feel that and to read those. And I must have read each one of them a hundred times. And the nice thing you said, the nice things that you said about me and about Ryan is amazing. And, and that it's like I said, that's the reason why I do what I do. I don't do this channel to make money. Uh, you know, I, there's more important that I'm in LA. It's two o'clock. My kids are in the pool. I've been sitting here filming videos for the last hour and a half. I could be down at the pool with my kids, but I want to make sure that I've put out all of the content that I promised I would put out this week. I'm dedicated to doing this. And it hurts, really hurts, when I get myself into a situation where I just see hate messages after hate messages, and that takes over more than anything else. So I take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody that reached out, to everybody that, you know, contacted me or left a message or left an email or left a comment on YouTube. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It means the world. It really does. Okay, so the next hate, and I'm not going to talk about this for much time because it ties in with my third love. Um, but I want to talk about Illusionist and I want to specifically talk about their whole playing cards are dead email that they get set, they sent through recently. Um, 
They've been sending a lot of weird emails out recently. I don't know if you noticed that. Illusionist have been sending out a bunch of really weird emails. So a little while ago, they sent out an email about the costs of running a magic company. I don't even understand why that video went out. I, that, that blog went out. I just don't fucking get it. I don't get what the point was. Why do we... You don't hear that from Tesco. You don't hear that from Tesco, do you? Right, okay, uh, we'd like to talk to people about our operating costs and, you know, maybe somehow that will encourage you to shop at Tesco. As a marketing strategy, maybe I'm missing something. I'm going to know a thing or two about marketing, but maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't make much sense to me at all as to why Illusionist, and I say Illusionist, it's Garen Clark, isn't it? He's the CEO. He's actually come out and he's honest and open and he said, hey, I'm the CEO. And I, I don't understand why Garen is sending these emails out. I really don't understand. I don't get it. You know, it, it, it for me, you know, you've only got a certain amount of emails that you can send. Put content out about really valuable content that people want to watch uh, or people want to listen to or read. But I don't get why you would send emails out like that, especially when they proudly say, hey, in 2022, we had uh, over £100,000 of uh, royalties. That's not a lot. That tells me that you're either doing very, very badly or you're paying your artist shit. When you think about every product that Illusionist has ever bought out and you think about all the royalty payments that need to pay, because it's not like limited to a certain amount of time, you know, they get, they're sending royalty payments out all of the time. So all of the releases they've ever done over time that they owe royalty payments for, including all the new ones, they've only paid $100,000 out in 2022. That's really low, but whatever. Look, they're sending out a lot of really weird emails. And Garrett sent an email out a little while ago, um, which uh, was all about playing cards being dead. And the entire email was written like Garrett had somehow had some sort of brain aneurysm and turned into a five-year-old because none of the points he made made any sense. He was basically saying, playing cards are dead. Nobody likes playing cards anymore. So we're not, you know, or something. We're not going to produce playing cards. Or, like, at best, it shows he doesn't understand how the, how the magic industry works. Which is kind of worrying as he's the CEO of Illusionist, right? And at best... He, he's an idiot, which I don't think he is. I don't think Garrett Clark's an idiot. I think he's grown from his days back in the... the we all know what Garrett did back in... We all know. We all know. We've all seen the videos of him in Wales with the doorman and stuff. We don't need to know that. That, that, that. He's grown from those days, and he's a completely different person. I'm sure he's way more intelligent than that. So I don't understand what he was trying to achieve. I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. It made no sense. It was like he was just talking incoherent shite because if the playing cards are dead and the playing card production industry is dead we'll tell theory 11 who basically just produce playing cards now and then the odd magic trick tell that to all of the kickstarters that get funded all of the time for playing cards hell cube 52's come out which is a deck of cards maybe made in a very different way may not actually have a traditional deck of cards value it's a deck of cards um, produced by the USPCC, that's become the fastest selling trick for Murphy's in 2023 to this point. So you're talking shit, right? You're talking absolute crap. Now, I could spend 15 minutes talking about why you're talking crap, because you are, but instead, I'm going to use that to link into my next love because I want to talk about somebody who can, uh, who can, who can express the plot holes within what you're talking about and within your email about playing cards, he can express it in a far better way than I ever could. So the next love is, uh, is, uh, uh, is Caven Booth. Now, I've got to be honest, I, you know, I spend a bit of time looking at stuff on YouTube and um, some, you know, I, I, I'm expanding my uh, knowledge base of YouTube in terms of I'm constantly reaching out and looking at more YouTubers. And Caven Booth is somebody who I was kind of aware of, but hadn't spent much time studying, um, purely because 
I just didn't have time. He was not somebody that was on my radar. But, you know, before I went to LA, and especially while I've been in LA, I've been binging a lot of his content. And the first thing I want to tell you is go check this guy out. He's incredible. His YouTube channel, I did a video a few weeks ago of my favorite YouTube channels. Um, it was done before I really spent much time binging Caven's material and his content. But if I had done that before I made this video, uh, he would probably be in the top two, three slots, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. He's very articulate. He comes across as uh, a really nice guy, somebody I'd like to definitely meet, I'd definitely like to interview. But his content is so diverse. Um, he does um, interesting topics. He does tutorials, but not like your typical crap that a lot of people do. Uh, I kind of put him in the same league as, as Lloyd Barnes when it comes to tutorials. And I've got no problems with tutorials on YouTube, as you know. Um, and he, he's just, his, his style as a YouTuber is amazing. Big fan, huge fan of Caven Booth. If you haven't gone and checked him out, please do so. Incredible guy. Um, and, and one of the best YouTubers in Magic, as far as I'm concerned. But specifically, go and look at a video he did a few days ago, about two weeks ago now, which was talking about the whole illusionist playing card bollocks. He actually took this whole email, he read it out, he broke down segments, and he talked about why illusionists were talking crap, basically. He literally broke it down. And he, he, I couldn't, if you sat me in a room with a video camera and gave me a week to come up with a video talking about this whole illusionist playing card of crap, I could not do it as well as Caven has. He has literally taken every point that I wanted to make and made it in a much better way, in a more articulate way, and in a better produced way. So the next love is Cave and Booth, and I want to do two things. One, if you haven't already done so, go check out some of his content and subscribe to him. But second of all, go and watch that video on Illusionist, because the point I made earlier about Illusionist and sending weird emails out about playing cards being dead, you will understand exactly what I'm talking about if you go and watch the Cave and Booth video. Uh, it's incredible. So there you go. My, my next love, my third love, I think it is, is, um, is Cave and Booth. Okay, so the next one on the hate list, this is number three, isn't necessarily a hate, but it definitely doesn't fit into the love list. It, it doesn't warrant its own video, and I want to talk about it, because that's what this whole love-hate list is all about. It's about talking about stuff that's happened in the community. So this is not really necessarily a hate. I'm not angry about this, but it's definitely not a love. This is kind of more of a dislike type thing. I want to talk about uh, unbiased magic reviews. And look, I've had, a, me and him have gone back and forth over the last year uh, for, over a variety of different things. It started with me getting all pissy and moany that he, uh, um, you know, he gave a bad review to my Penguin Live um, and I couldn't understand his points. They made no sense, but whatever. And then I bought out Lucky Lotto and, and, and he jumped on the Magic Cafe thread and derailed it about some small... It, look, it doesn't matter. He's done videos about me. I've done videos about him. It doesn't matter. I would like to point out, although this is not on the love list, I would like to point out that I do think a lot of his videos are very well produced. And I do think that a lot of the points he makes, I actually agree with. And I do think that if him and I sat down in a room and had a drink together, I think we'd probably get on more than I would with most magicians. So it's kind of ironic that I'm plopping in here on this part of the list. But it's because of a video that he did. And also, by the way, while you're at it, go and subscribe to him because he's, uh, it, it is a good channel and his reviews are very, very accurate. And if anything else, he's definitely brutally honest, probably more so than me. Um, but he did this video recently on Christian Grace's Enigma. Now, I'm doing videos about Enigma soon, but Enigma is like probably the most hyped trick of the decade at this point. More people are talking about Enigma than anything else. And I saw Enigma initially for when, when it was very in its early stages, when it was in its early development stages, because Christian's been working on this for a while. And um, uh, he... he and, Obviously, I haven't got the new version. I am getting the new version because I'm going to review it. But I haven't got the new version yet. But I, I've seen him perform it a couple of times. And 
I, I, I have, I talked about this in the q and I think it's, uh, that was on last Sunday. I think it's incredibly clever. I think it's incredible in terms of what it does. And, and, and Christian's a genius. I personally wouldn't perform it. And you can go back and watch the Q&A if you want to know why. And I'm going to do a review of it at some point in the future, very, very soon. But my point of including Unbiased in this list is because he did a video about Enigma and why he should, why people, sh why he's not buying it. And he did like about a 10 minute video or maybe just short of a 10 minute video talking about why people, why he's not buying Enigma. And he talked and it, to his defense, he said at the beginning, this is not a review. This is not me reviewing the product. This is why I'm not going to buy it. And then proceeded to talk about why he wouldn't buy it. Um, and 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 made some points, some of which are accurate, some of which I don't think are accurate, in all honesty, to be perfectly honest. But the reason I, I, I it's on the, like I say, it's not a hate, but the reason it's on a, I'm not too happy with this list is because I think that the name of his channel is Unbiased Magic Reviews. And I think as a reviewer, and that's what he's known as, he's known as a reviewer, I think if you're going to talk about a product, I think that you need to be able to have that product in your hand in order to make a video about it. Because you, you saw it in the, in the comments down below. You know, he put his video, and yes, like I say, he said at the beginning, I haven't got it. This is not a review. But then proceeded to talk about all the things that he didn't like about it. And you read the comments down below and he's like, oh, thank you for saving me $200. I'm definitely not buying this. I'm definitely not buying this. Oh, you made some good points. I was saving up for this, but now I'm not going to buy it. And I think that he has an impact on sales within this community. And I don't think it was fair that A, he put this video up three or four days before launch. I don't think that's fair. Um, and B... I, you know, if you're going to say why you're not going to buy it, fine, but at least do it after it's been launched if you're not going to review it. Now, if you're going to review it, great. If you've sat down and you've watched the tutorial and you've tried it out and you've gone and done it in a performance situation and you you can make a uh, a review based on all of this information, then great. But if you're just doing a video going, I'm not going to buy this and this is why, I think that you you shouldn't do that if you're a review channel you should review it either review something or don't review it you know either review it or don't review it but don't put a video together where you're basing this on somebody else that's bought it and because it that, you know as well as me <coughs> excuse me reviewing something i've start i've gone into a review I've got, had something come in for review and I looked at it and I'm like, I am not going to like this. And then after playing around with it and watching the tutorial and trying it on a few people, which I always do before I film a review show, I realized, no, actually, I do like this. I think this is really good. And I think that things can change over time and your opinion can change. And I think for somebody that's as respected as a reviewer as unbiased is... I think that he owes Christian, if you're going to put a video up saying, I'm not going to buy this and this is why I'm not going to buy it, either don't put the video up, right, you're not going to buy it. Do we do that? Do you do that on everything? Do you, do, you didn't do a video saying, I'm not going to buy Lucky Lotto, but that, 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 you said that you weren't going to buy that. Why, why suddenly are you doing it on? Because I know that Unbiased has said it's not about clicks and it's not about views and he's not interested in that, and I believe him. But why suddenly take this one trick and say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, why do a video on this saying you're not going to buy it? This is not going to be the only thing ever that you've watched a trailer of and you go, I'm not going to buy that. So why do it now? And why do it a few days before launch? You know, it, you could say it's about educating people. But if you want to educate people, buy people and then give them your opinion. You're a very knowledgeable person. And not only are you a very knowledgeable person, but you have an articulate way of putting things across and a lot of people trust you. Um, I, as a creator, wouldn't be happy if you said, for example, I'm not going to buy Cube 52, and here's why I'm not going to buy it. Without owning the product or watching the nine hours of tutorial, and then if you did that three or four days before launch, I'd be pissed. I'd be really annoyed. I haven't spoken to Christian, but I imagine he's really annoyed about that. I think if you're going to do a piece about why this product is not very good as a magic reviewer, then you should buy it. Or you should reach out to Christian and say, send me one. I don't think this is going to be very good, but I'd like to put an unbiased
opinion together. I'm not saying you're biased for or against Christian. I know, for example, you've left reviews on stuff that he's done in the past that you've been impressed with. And that's great. But I just think that you dropped the ball on this one. And I don't think that as a reviewer, any reviewer, myself included, I don't think that we should put videos out there reviewing or giving us our opinion on a product without actually... Uh, owning it. And as I say, on I had a and a I, somebody on my Q&A last Sunday, they said, hey, what do you think of Enigma? And I spent three minutes answering the question because it was a question. I didn't do a video on it. I just said, hey, I've seen it. I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to perform it. However, I'm still going to buy it because I want to review it and I want to give it the, I might be wrong. I might be wrong because I think I know everything to know about it, but without watching all the tutorials and everything, I don't know for sure. So this is not a hit piece on, on, on unbiased. In fact, exactly the opposite. I encourage people to go and subscribe to his channel. I think a lot of the stuff he does is very good. And I've gone beyond that little feud. I, th I think that's over. But I do think that you owe Christian a review. I really don't think that you approach that in the right way, in my opinion. Final love. Love number four is Chris Congreve. Let's show Congi some love. Um, so Chris Congreve, um, I've known Chris for many, many years. Great creator. Fantastic creator. Literally written the book on magic again and again and again and again. And probably again and again and again in the future. Uh, Chris is a great guy. A really, 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 really great guy. Fantastic creator. And um, I don't know if people know his story, but about several years ago, he was forced to leave Magic and get a full-time job because he had a throat problem and he couldn't speak. If you can't speak, it's very difficult to do Magic. His gigs dried up and he got a job. And he was going to, his throat got better and he was going to come back to Magic. And then this thing called COVID hit and everywhere got locked down. So he stayed in his job. And now he's decided to... Uh, give up his job and do what Chris should do, which is become a full-time magician and creator. Somebody as good as Chris Congreve should not be doing anything else other than magic. And Chris has set up a company called Stella Magic Shop, uh, where he's creating and selling his own tricks. And he's also organized a convention, which is taking place next year, um, a two-day magic convention in the Midlands, and um, he's already announced some amazing names. He's got Mark Elsden there. He's got um, Gary Jones there. He's already got some incredible names lined up for this bloody convention. And um, knowing Chris, he's going to kick ass at it. And this month, he's lecturing all over the place. He's got a lecture. He's doing the IBM convention, I think, very, very soon. He's lecturing over in New Zealand and Australia. I mean, the guy has literally hit it out the park. And it makes me so happy to see that he's back in magic. It really does. Because honestly, magic needs more people like Chris Congreve. He's nice. He's kind. And look, I'm talking about somebody that had a feud with Chris back in the day. Back in the day, me and Chris went knuckle back and forth, back and forth. He didn't like me. I didn't like him. We started off being friends. Then we became mortal enemies. And now we're in a really good place with each other each other and I, I just think that Chris is one of the nicest people in magic he will help anybody and he will do anything for anyone and as much as he's released through Alakazam and through himself and through um, all the different companies he's worked for and all the different things that he's done through the years he's nowhere near as well known as he should be and it's a crying shame that somebody that professional that nice that creative that intelligent and 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 that that good a performer isn't known worldwide as being like the best of the best. And I think this is going to change. I think that the decision that Chris has made to leave his job and go full time into magic and creating, I think it's the best decision that he could ever make. And I can't wait to see what's coming up. So I want you to do two things for me. Number one, go and follow Stella. That's S-T-E-L-L-A. -L -L go follow Stella Magic Shop on Facebook. And if there's a mailing list, go sign up to the mailing list. Go and buy everything that he does. If you see him lecturing, go and lecture and go and get some tickets to the to the uh, magic convention he's going to. Me and Ryland will be there 100%. And I know that anything that Chris is involved with is going to be super successful. So the last thing on this love list, and I don't know if he's going to have time to watch this or if he's going to see it, but if anybody sees him, go tell him that Craig Petty loves Chris Congreve and that he's one of the best magicians in the world. And I'm so glad that he's doing what he was born to do. And the final hate, the final hate on my love-hate list are people who twist the narrative 
without proof. Part of the thing, and, and this is kind of going back to the online bullying thing. It's not really about going back to the online bullying thing, but um, it's it's something that annoys me that I see happening an awful lot. And I'm going to talk to you while I uh, while I click on a few buttons because I want to show you something. I'll talk to you about something and you'll see what I mean. Um, people that twist the narrative without truth. A lot of the time, you know, I, I've, I've been, uh, the last couple of years, people have turned around to me and said, oh, Craig Petty's like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. And uh, I, I've had even more people say, oh, Craig Petty, Craig, I used to not like him, but I do now. I didn't like him for the longest time. And uh, and now I do, and I, I, that's the thing that I get all the time. Oh, I didn't like Craig Petty, and now I do like him, and, and I never used to like him. And I don't know why, I think it's maybe because I'm a little bit more outspoken on my YouTube videos than I am in real life, if you meet me at a convention. But I think the other reason is because of people like this dickhead. So let's talk about this dickhead, because this happens probably about... 10 times every day, but I think this will illustrate my point perfectly. So let me just uh, illustrate my point here. So there's this guy called John Spencer, um, who went on to my video. You know, I did a video about the magic community being disgusting, and we talked about all the amazing things that people said. Uh, this guy, um, uh, John Spencer, is it? Let me just find him again. I've just gone off him. Yeah, this guy called John Spencer says, why is it doing that? There we go. Um, said, um, how, ca <laughs> how can it be anything but disgusting when its leaders stroke heroes are nothing but thieves, liars, and Gestapo-like censors who have any different opinion silenced? To host a home? Question mark. So basically he's saying that uh, I'm a thief, I'm a liar, and I censor stuff. So I just replied to him. I normally ignore these and block the people immediately, but I thought, fuck it. I, mean, I was in a good mood. Um, so I thought, fuck it. So I said, I'm a thief and a liar. Am I good to know? I'm not trying to silence anyone's opinions. You don't like me good for you. Does that make it okay to make baseless accusations about my character? Um, and I said, more importantly, why don't you tell me who you really are? I'm not hiding. Everybody knows who I am. It's your turn. Every comment on, on this channel from you is attacking my character, which it is. I went back. A lot of people don't realize you can look when you're a YouTube creator. You can look at every single comment that somebody's made on your channel. And I, some of them I just miss and I don't see. And this, this guy is a perfect example. He made like 10 comments and all of them were really negative, really taking the piss out of me. I said, I get you don't like me. So if you're prepared to say this in a public forum on YouTube, why don't you back up your accusations by telling everyone who you are? And he said, um, you've had several threads pulled. You've had bad reviews on magic sites pulled. Don't lie about censorship, Himmler. So now I'm Himmler. Don't lie about censorship. Uh, and apparently I've had several bad reviews on magic sites pulled. So I said, I haven't pulled any comments unless they're insulting. I don't need that. Um, sometimes if somebody will leave a comment just slagging me or Ryland off, I'll just delete it immediately um, because I don't want that person commenting on YouTube. Um, but if people have a negative opinion, it's fine for people to have their own opinion. But I mean, if you're going to say something like this, that I'm Himmler, that I, I'm the Gestapo, Back it up with some proof, right? So I said, I haven't pulled anything unless they're insulting. I don't need that. If I was censoring comments, <coughs> excuse me, I wouldn't be having a discussion with you about it. How much power do you think I have? What magic sites have had bad reviews pulled off them because I know nothing about it? Um, come on, buddy. If you're going to throw around some accusations, give us some proof. Please enlighten me. In fact, why don't you tell everyone who you are? Let's have a live debate, totally uncensored, you and me. You can accuse me of whatever uh, you want. Obviously, you'll bring proof, and I'll offer my point of view. This would obviously involve you telling everyone who you are. What do you think? Because currently, you're another faceless troll refusing to say who you are, throwing down lies about me without proof. Honestly, some comments hurt me, but the stuff you're saying is one step up from being a flat earther. I pity you, bro. I really do. And he said, um, liar, one who is honest. Tell me, friend. And he speech marks. Uh, when Matt busted you and called you on uh, your method, were you A, honest, or B, dishonest? Um, when you copied another's trick as your own, your words, not mine, was that A, honest, or B, dishonest? Your turn. Now, I think when he's talking about copied another person's trick, my words, I think he's talking about red. Th the annoying thing about stuff like this is because 
whenever anybody wants to attack me on the internet, once they start making up lies about me and stuff that isn't true, they always bring up red. That's the thing that they, that's the base that people start off with. Oh, you copied red, even though I've talked about it for like fucking 13 years. Um, and then the thing where Matt busted you and called you on your method, were you A, honest or B, dishonest? I'm guessing he's talking about a Matt test, um, which our film generally is, uh, you know, like, like if, if he's busted me, I'll joke and I'll say, no, no, that's not how it's done. And, and you know, I'm not going to expose the method on a YouTube video of somebody else's marketed trick. And then we'll talk about it afterwards. I don't know what he's talking about with that. He hasn't given me a specific example. So I have no idea what he's talking about. But apparently I'm the Gestapo. 50% of the reason I'm the Gestapo is because of a map test, I think. And the other 50% is because of red. So I replied and I said, I'm not taking turns. You refuse to tell me who you are. Your arguments are totally pointless. Let's not bring Matt into this. You said that I've had reviews pulled off magic sites. That's what you led with. I'd like proof, please. And I'd like to know who you are. Because if all you can do is bring up red again after 10 years, then your opinion means nothing. So come on, tell me who you are and tell me which magic sites I've had reviews pulled from. Should be simple to prove if it's true. And then 24 hours later, he didn't reply. So I said, I'm assuming you're struggling to find proof of me removing reviews from magic sites. You haven't even said which magic site. Surely as you made this statement about me, it's something you could easily prove. I'd love to see proof, but perhaps start with the sites I've done this on. And there's been no reply, and that was 18 hours ago. So the point for this, and the, the point I'm trying to make, and I'm not wanting to go back and forth about this person said this about me. I get it all of the time. The amount of times I meet up with somebody and they say, you've done this. And I'm like, no, I haven't. No. Where, 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 where's your proof? What, what do you mean I've done this? And a lot of the time they'll go, oh, well, somebody else was talking about you doing this. Well, that doesn't mean that I've done it. That means somebody else is talking about it. You have dickheads like this stupid fucking knob rot who is going out there saying, oh, Craig's had reviews pulled from magic sites. I don't have the power to pull reviews from magic sites. First of all, right, let's look at the magic site that my name is closely linked to. Penguin, right? I work on the Penguin booth at Magic Lion. I produce 50% of the tricks I do through Penguin. I personally know all of the guys from Penguin, right? If there was one magic company that I could have my reviews pulled from, it would be Penguin. Because I do so much for them. They fly me all over the world to be on their booth, right? Look at the quantum deck. Uh, look at the quantum deck on Penguin. There's like 70, 70 reviews. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are calling me every name under the sun and saying I'm a liar and this is the worst trick in the world and this is terrible and this is just dreadful and oh my God, Craig lies because he said that it's examinable and it's not examinable and all of this bullshit, right? If I was able to remove <laughs> reviews from sites, the first thing that I'd do is I'd ring up Penguin and say, right, motherfuckers, take that shit off immediately. And while you're at it, you still list red as a physical product on your website. If somebody types in red petty, near the top is going to be red. And there's some very nasty things said about me on there. Go and take that shit off while you're at it. Okay? Then I would contact the Magic Cafe and I would say, hey, you know the, those threads? Go look at the team building thread that went out about six years ago where I've literally got everybody assassinating my character. That's still on. Let's take that off. Oh, and while you're at it, the original red thread is still on there. Let's take that off. Oh, and you know that Lucky Lotto thread where everyone called me a liar because I fixed the trailer even though I didn't? Let's take that shit off while we're at it as well. But no, that crap's still up there. Yeah? What? The problem with dickheads like this is that they say something. And the problem is they say it and a percentage of people, a percentage of sheep will believe it and they'll go, oh, Craig's the Gestapo. He's had stuff removed from the internet. I know this because this guy said it on YouTube. What you don't realize is this guy on YouTube is hiding behind a fake username. Nobody knows who he is. And he's either... A, there's only three options here. Number one, first option is the guy is a fucking idiot with all the wit, charm, brains, and intelligence of an Alsatian dog after a head swap operation. That's number one. B, he's heard about it 
from somebody else and he's just regurgitating this information, which makes him just as much as a fucking idiot as in point number one. But now he's a fucking idiot who can't make his own mind up. Or C, he's deliberately trying to say shit to turn people against me for some reason, and I don't know why. I suppose the point I'm trying to make with this, and it happens all of the time, all of the time, like just recently in the Magic Circle, somebody posted on there going, hey, there's this team building thing that's happening, and uh, it's from this company called Slightly Unusual. So uh, uh, let's let what the members think about this. You know, let's get a discussion going. He obviously has a fucking problem. He, everybody knows that Slightly Unusual is my company. You know, if he had a fucking issue, he could have either A, reported it directly to the fucking Magic Circle, or B, he could have rung me himself. But no, no, none of those two things happened. Instead, some dumb fucking idiot decided to go and just whatever. I am sick and tired of people spreading bullshit about me or making little posts saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And trying to make me look like an asshole. That is a perfect example. This John guy set up an account on YouTube two years ago. He posts on Magic TV and constantly calls me out on bullshit, which isn't true. And the problem is, and this is what I hate, the point of this, the reason this is the final point on the hate list is because I work really hard to have a certain reputation within this industry because that's all I've got. All I've got is my reputation. Again, I'm sitting here in my room when in LA while my kids are in the pool having fun filming videos because I don't want to let the people that watch this YouTube channel down. What I don't want, my reputation is very important to me and I'll protect it. And when I see people just lying about me and saying, oh, Craig Petty is the Gestapo. Craig Petty silences people like I've got some sort of fucking power that I can just snap my fingers and have negative reviews taken off. Shut the fuck up, you stupid dickhead. You bellend, you total fucking tool. The Gestapo. Here you go, John. Here's an idea. What I want you to do is next time you think about posting on Magic TV about me being a dickhead, next time you think, of, because you're not going to reply to that because I've asked you for proof and you've not given me any. And I've asked you to do a live debate with me. But you're not going to want to do that because you're not going to want to know. You're not going to want people to know who you are, right? Because you're happy to make your points and you're happy to assassinate my character, but you want to do it without anybody knowing who you are. So here's what I'd like you to do: next time you think about posting something about me, right? Next time you think about making up some bullshit about me, or maybe you've heard somebody else and you go, "Oh, that's got to be true because you're a fucking mindless dickhead." Next time any of that happens, here's what I want you to do: I want you to take your laptop. Open it up. I'm assuming that you type on a laptop, okay? It could be on your phone. doesn't really matter. Let's just assume it's a laptop. you got your laptop, right? So you open it up and you go, right, okay, latest video. Here's a Craig Petty video because you watch all my videos, don't you? I mean, and I don't know why because you fucking hate me, but people like you watch all of my videos. <laughs> what I want you to do next time you do this, right? Is open one of my videos. Then I want you to type up some bullshit about me. Craig kicks puppies, uh, Craig takes kittens and burns them alive in an oven and then eats them and feeds them to his family. Um, Craig ripped off Cube 52 from a Tibetan priest who studied cube manufacturing for 30 years in a Tibetan monastery. Any of that. Say any of that shit. doesn't really matter. Pick a subject. Talk some bollocks about it. You know, it seems to be something that you're good at. Right? Write it all up. Right? Make sure you've typed everything up. Check it. Stick it on Grammarly. Make sure that it's typed up really nicely. Make sure you're making your points as crystal fucking clear as you can. Then what I want you to do, before you hit submit and you put it onto the YouTube channel, I want you to grab the cloth. You know, the same cloth that's sitting there on your bedside table in your mum's basement. Take that cloth. Then what I want you to do is shine the screen up, right? Important, don't hit submit. Then what I want you to do is close the laptop and shine the whole laptop up, right? Okay, so it's all really shinily. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take the laptop, turn it sideways, go into the bathroom, pull your trousers down, pull your pants down, pull your underwear down, pull down, 
pull down your mom's fucking panties that you're wearing from the night before. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Take that laptop and shove it up your fucking ass, you stupid, dumb motherfucker. So there you go, guys. That's another, uh, that's another video in the bag. Love, hate list. Well done to all the people on the love list. Sorry to people all on the hate list. Do me a favor, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again very, very soon with another video, but thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. I'm going to go in the pool. My name's Craig from Magic TV.